No idea on how to drive ships. Trouble scratching armor surfaces. Taking one too much damage for my good. And this guy is for you. Welcome. Teaching this guy on tanks. Welcome friends to another Jim Noltis video. So starting off again, let me know that this guy is correct as of update 1.21. If you're watching this at a later update, you told me I've made some changes to how armor works. Secondly, I'll be breaking this guy to several part videos, mainly due to the concept of tanking and each tank in all missions that needed to be talked about separately. But keep in mind that it will take a really long time because I don't have all the tanks yet, considering the one and not sponsored for anything. 2. Thanks like all infantry weapons, you need to be grinded and a lot of credits just to buy one. So, without further ado, let's get on with it. So we start off by looking into our tanker. When you grind one of your infantry until vocation is open, you may get one automatically. If not, you may need to buy one. But do not worry, they cost 120 grand. And you already have a starter tank right off the bat. If you have issues with credit grinding, I do have a guide on grinding credits with recommended infantry weapons. So your basic tanker starts like any other soldier, practically nothing. Except that they come with your starter tank and a starter submachine gun that's mainly for self defense. Let's talk first about grinding the armor assault ribbon. Grinding the armor assault ribbon is mainly for you to get other tanks, be it higher tier a different class of tank. But obviously, we have to use a starter tank first. The starter tanks. They have no armor, the main armament is a machine gun, and they are the only tank you have to grind with. But not to worry, Mito has made the grind a lot easier because you see, in the past, before armor 2.0, you have to actually destroy tanks with the machine guns to grind. Today, you just need to fire the gun and damage tanks. Of course, this right one will grant the highest XP gain. But how do you do it with just machine guns? Simple. You are a light tank, also. This means just not maneuver the enemy tanks and try to hit them on the sides. Just try to avoid the front of any tank as much as possible. Machine guns in that situation can only wither down armor intensity. Unless of course you have upgraded the ammo. Keep in mind however that when I say destroy tanks on the components, you best be doing it in your tank. Using AT weapons will only grind the AT ribbon instead. Just do your best, but do not worry. Peter is nice enough to put the next tank to unlock the ribbon rank 1. But then again, there's no need to worry about needing the ammo upgrade on your starter tank, because by the time you even unlock the first crate, you should already have unlocked your first tank. Now we have been grinding the dinosaur ribbon for a bit and carrying given one. one. You are not your first light tank with a cannon. Should we call it tail ones or is the starter still one? I don't know, I'll let you guys give it a run. Should you buy this tank? You don't have to, but I strongly recommend you do. Because the next tank to unlock can be a ways away, especially if you're struggling with the starter thing. Any tank with proper armament can make your grinding a whole lot easier. They are affordable and very cheap to spawn. But beware the stock ammo can be a struggle to use. But not to worry, once you unlock the APC here, that's when you start cooking. So, you want to be grind the tanks in their respective ribbon for upgrade ammo. Simple, just do your best. Any infantry killed, cars, trucks destroyed, civilian vehicles do not count. But first of all, any tanks destroyed will give you the XP you need. Just keep in mind by the way, that shooting friendly vehicles will not give any XP at all. 
unless they are commanded by the enemy and is driven by the enemy. So do not waste your ammo on friendly vehicles unless someone is stealing or stolen said vehicle. So talking about the particular tank ribbon, what upgrades are there? Looking at this ribbon, we have two kinds of upgrades, ammo and support crates. Under ammo, we have two, APCR or Armor Piercing Composite Rigid, which all tanks upgraded API Cornus, and HE or High Explosive. So if you have issues with your stock AP shells, fret not, the upgraded APCR will be a huge, huge breath of air. For a small increase of price in repairs, the APCR will pay itself off very quickly. Instead of possibly scratching enemy armor integrity, it will actually damage the tank and its components. High explosive, as the name suggests, is a well, simply put it, high velocity grenade that you spam at infantry and basically piss them off in the switching to an infantry with full loadout anti tank weaponry. It's best used to clear out areas that are locked down by the enemy so your friendly infantry can push up. Or to clear them, then free loader hiding the attack. Keep in mind, by the way, that the explosion radius is depending on the gun's caliber. Small gun go small home. But the big gun go. Next, we have support crates. We have three of these ammo, health, Panzer 460. Each of these are mainly for your friendlies to use to help you encourage them to stay close to your tank. But, you know, of course, we all know that that's not really going to happen. If they do, it is very much appreciated. So loading on your tank during the stock grind process, just use the stock ammo. Then once you unlock it, you can switch over to the APCR. If your tank has limited ammo, but the gun is decent, you can carry the APCR with stock AP as backup. Nothing wrong with that. However, if the tank has limited ammo and a weaker gun, for example the Panzer 38 TE, with only 48 shells per slot, feel free to buy a second set of APCR. In that situation, it will make your life a whole lot easier. You can do that by going to the specific tank's ribbon, click on the APCR icon on the ribbon, then you can buy it by clicking on the bar at the bottom right. Once you unlock it, fill the second slot with high explosive shells. Because you see, regardless of what tank you are, you will always find yourself in an infantry support situation where high explosive is a requirement. But if you're seriously going after tanks only, then two sets of APCR should be for you. Just avoid any infantry contact, as APCR is only good for making holes in armor. As for support crates, I simply went for health. Ammo works too, depending on your experience. You'll be burning health crate or ammo. But for the Panzer 460 crate, definitely not for me. You see, it's meant for infantry to grab one and help you deal with an armored vehicle a lot quicker. But remember that so too are you an armored vehicle. And in any shooting games really, there's always that stop back with Panzer 460 for no reason. Dude, what the hell? So giving infantry Panzer 416 is not the most ideal thing ever. After this first light tank, it's pretty much just a smooth grind on the armor sword ribbon from here on out. What thing you want, which tank class you wish to pursue, it's up to you. You do not have to buy every single tank in the one armor assault line. But Tim, I want to think about grinding the armor assault ribbon, armor destroying tanks. Hold on, I'm getting to that. If you are an OVAT decker who quit the game before armor 2.0 for good reasons, Keep in mind that tanks no longer die just by shooting wherever you like for 3 to 4 shots. Armor thickness, integrity, and most importantly, internal components it affects how quickly you can take the tank down. Armor thickness can determine how much damage the tank can take. If the tank has little to no armor at all, the tank's HP or internal component may be more vulnerable to most attacks, but if there's heavy armor, the tank can absorb some damage with little to no effect to the helpful or even the internal components. But keep in mind there's this thing called armor integrity. 
that displayed around your health pool icon has these curves representing the front, sides and rear. This can also determine how much damage the tank can take. Now recently an update has made the armor integrity near impossible to lose, but basically low caliber rounds or MG bullets will not do any damage to the tank, but if the armor integrity is low or basically gone, the tank will take damage, if not more, from some of the lowest caliber of guns. So during this time, it might be time to just let the tank die, go down with it, then afterwards just respawn but with full ammo, health and of course, armor integrity. Now, shooting a tank with no internal components may result you in firing 8 to 9 shells before you finally see progress. So, internal components are an important aspect to note when dealing with other tanks. Let's make them now, no pun intended. Let's start with the tracks. So the idea of destroying tracks is to hinder the tank's basic mobility. Tracks damage will only result in minimal damage to the tank's HP but more importantly, it will cause the tank to spin out making it difficult to flank or reverse into cover. But keep in mind that blowing both tracks out is a favour in disguise. Sure, the tank is incredibly slow after that, but it's no longer awkwardly manoeuvring which means which means the tank may not dip into cover and repair a whole lot easier. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Another thing to note, how much damage tracks affect the tank in question is based on how maneuverable or fast the tank is. If say an M5A1 steward tank gets one track blown off versus an maybe an M4A3E2 or Jumbo Shaman, the M5A1 will struggle to move forward or backward. Where the Jumbo may not share the same difficulty. If you are in this situation, you have to drive forward or backwards while holding down the direction opposite to what your tank is forced to turn to. Example, right track blown off, hold on the A keeps the compensate by turning left. Keep in mind however that your tank still finds itself turning to the direction its track is blown off, off during which you may want to stop the vehicle, then just do the compensation without forward or backward motion until you are back on track. Another interesting way but sort of risky is to try to trick the enemy tank into blowing off your other track by facing the healthy track towards them. With both tracks blown off, you can then make an easier exit from the area. Now we move on to the next part, the transmission. Often found on the front of most tanks, unless it's a Soviet tank where most of the time the transmission is found in the back. The idea of destroying the transmission is to hinder the tank's mobility too. The difference is that Instead of causing the tank to spin out, the tank will have a drastic drop in speed. But have care that the tank can still escape into cover should it need to if the transmission is blown off. It does, however, increase a bit of damage output when destroyed, more than blowing the tracks off. Then, if you're in a pinch, destroying enemy transmission will also generate a thick white smoke rising from the gun sights that will blind the gunner allowing you to go back or relocate. Does not work if the transmission is in the back. Next one is the engine. Often found in the back of the tank, this part helps to move the tank, therefore, shooting it will drastically hinder the tank's speed. It will also dish out a massive amount of damage to the tank when destroyed. With damage increase plus a lack of speed, it will make your tank fighting a whole lot more pleasant. Now since it's in the back of the tank, Keep in mind that it can be difficult to hit from the front, but that's not really true as some tanks are missed. They may not that the engine can take damage from the front, but do not rely on this as not all tanks have that deal of armor. Next up is the ammo and fuel components. Now, and what you're thinking? Jim, I play in War Thunder and shooting ammo is different from shooting fuel. In War Thunder, yes. But in HNG, not really. You see, shooting ammo does not cause the tank to get one shot immediately. Unless you're one of those bullies with no iron fist match and an anti heavy thing. And destroying ammo does not actually cause the player to lose ammo count with it. Which also brings me to a quick note that carrying one less ammo slot does not amount to less chance of getting ammo, right? The internal component is still there. Anyway, more importantly, these components are important parts to target. 
Found in the sides or below the turret. For the ammo. Destroying just one of these components will do the most amount of damage to the tank itself. So if you want to destroy tanks with less shells, you gotta target these parts. A quick thing to note, some Soviet tanks were known to have external fuel tanks, which are these cylinders on the rear sides of the tank. Shooting these will not really increase the damage dealt to the tank at all, so don't count on it when dealing with these Soviet tanks. Stick to the internal ones. And speaking of components, quick thing to dissolve, for the love of god, stop showing your broad sides! Components are the most vulnerable in the sides. So if you're facing an enemy tank, head on, turn and face your armor to the enemy, not your sides. Another thing is that if you have been watching my tank videos, and you find that I've always suggested playing hold on approach. This is because the tank's internal components, like the fuel, are often found in the hull, not so much the turret. Therefore, shooting the turret just for damage purely is not going to be sufficient. What is hold down? It's to position your tank behind some cover tall enough to protect your hull, but not tall enough that your tank's gun can actually fire over it. This means only a turret is exposed. Beware of this, by the way. I noticed this while playing the M10 Wolverine. If the armored vehicle is one of those turretless, self propelled guns, or SPG for short, playing hold down may not work as well due to the fact that the gun is infused into the tank's hull. Therefore, if the SPG needed to shoot, it'd have to come out of cover to do that, exposing the hull to the elements. Next up is the turret ring. If you're playing playing a spring, this is one of the few most important components to target first. Found at the base of the turret of any tank, unless it's a turretless SPG in the answer. So. But if it does, it's not that it's going to matter anyway. Little to no increase in damage, but the idea of destroying the turret ring is not only to hinder any turret rotation speed into the realistic and then turret rotation speed, but to hinder the response to aiming as well. As the damaged turret ring will cause the turret to turn awkwardly, but more importantly, as a flank and spank tank, Damaging the turret ring will make it incredibly difficult for the tank to counter the problem as the tank will have to rely on the tank traverse to aim at a flanker that runs faster than they can blink. Next up is the gun breach. Another part that does not grant extra damage to the tank but it is the most important part to target if you're playing flank spec. Keep in mind that it does not cause the enemy to stop firing completely like in War Thunder, but it does cause the reload speed to drop drastically. Found in the middle of the turret, on the front half of the turretless SPG, Shooting it will cause the tank rate of fire to drop. Even with fast reload breach, getting the breach blown off is often a death sentence to any tank playing hit or brawling. You can try to knock it out by shooting the sides if you're flanking or even engaging the turret direct front. The view of this, some tanks breaches are easy to knock out, whereas some are near impossible unless it's playing flank. For example, the Soviet T26. The gun breach is actually sticking out of the tank, this block right here. And several other tanks have this as well, making the gun breach dangerously vulnerable. Whereas the M5A1 or any US tanks really have that strong man learned armor, where frontally the tank's gun breach is near impossible to knock out, unless a really strong gun is evolved in the fighting. So, in the event where you are having difficulty in knocking out the gun breach, just move on ahead other or important component parts. Other than wasting 4 to 5 shots, trying but failing to knock out the gun breach. Finally, the gun barrel. This is a really awkward part to hit. Sometimes the shot does not register on the barrel properly. Not really a crucial part to hit, but it is one that will hinder the tank's ability to aim. What happens when damage is that the tank can still fire, but the range and velocity drops drastically and he does not care whether the tank is already suffering from lack of safe performances. If you're playing the long range game, you can try to knock out the barrel. This forces the tank to readjust the aim, to at least try to hit something. Buying tank for you is a healthy barrel to put some shots in it. However, keep in mind that if you can knock out the barrel at range, they can do the same to you. So to prevent that while you're reloading, we got your turret to make it difficult for them. Now how about different classes of tanks? 
we have night tanks, medium tanks, heavy tanks, tank destroyers, and heavy tank destroyers. Let's break them down now, not literally. So before I talk about classes of tanks, note that I'll be giving tips based on the classes commentary like speed or firepower. Talking about specific tank like an M5A1 or a T3476 will be in a separate video. In this guide, I'll only mention a specific tank if there is an odd one out in their respective classes. So first off, light tanks. Light tanks are tanks with very thin armor with a small gun. The idea is to have speed and mobility, energy for armor and firepower. So playstyle is depending on the tank you are facing. When facing off with any tank, always try to identify the tank first. This way you'll know what to do and how to deal with them. And speaking of which, one thing to note, prioritize your targets. After identifying the tanks, be sure to pick your targets carefully. If you identify two tanks, if one only have, only have FMGs, the other has a cannon, shoot the cannon on first. Your tank can take a few rounds from starters, so take the one that can actually damage you first. The bigger threat. If both tanks have a cannon, go after the weakened one first. If there's, say, two M5A ones unloading shots onto your team, prioritize the one either you or your teammates have hit before. Now note this, I'm not suggesting a steel kill, I'm suggesting you take out one tank first. There's a gun firing at you afterwards. If there's a spawn truck involved, it's up to you. But I at least suggest going after that first. That way, less enemy infantry to annoy you later. Unless you really have no idea where that spawn truck is or no clear shot, then eh, target the tank that's shooting you first. As all like things go, try to adopt the flank as bank tactic. Make use of the tank's speed and mobility, and size, and circle around areas to come up to the enemies, rear and sides, and just wheel away at the components using your hurry rear to fire cannons. Sometimes you may not need to flank a spec. Sometimes tank can still perform exponentially playing it on brawling. But keep in mind that this is recommended only if your target is another light tank. Media tanks or tank destroyers may outgun you in that situation with their bigger guns. In this method, you may want to adopt the hold on tactic before engaging. Apart from fighting tanks, light tanks can also perform well in supporting infantry. Good speed, good mobility, allows light tanks to quickly respond to the need for armor support. If I suppose it's going out rapidly, you can help clear blind corners of any campus, giving the team the finger. Just bear in mind that light tank guns are often low caliber and as mentioned earlier, low caliber gun goes boom boom. And armor wise, while well, it's still compared to other tanks in this game, it is still strong against low caliber weapons. Just one thing to note, the T26 for a light tank is incredibly slow. So instead of flying a spank, you may be forced to do a head on brawling. So if that's the case, try adopting the whole now position for better survivability. The Taurus elevator position may make that easier. To counter them, try targeting one of the tracks first. Light tanks have a good mobility and speed, but they rely on the condition of the tracks and transmission to perform. Blowing off one track will cause most light tanks to struggle just to move forward and backwards, then just finish it off. Next up, medium tanks. Medium tanks are an in between of a light and heavy tank. These are frontal armor and very weak sides. Firepower are between strong and weak depending on the caliber. Pistol wise, it's apparent to your preference or the tank in general. But more importantly, these, these are all around us, versatile pieces of machinery. Medium tanks have excellent or decent mobility. Though not as good or not as small as light tanks, they can still play the flank as fan game. But beware that going down the tail of medium tanks, their weight classes slowly increases and they get bigger guns, thicker armor, so they slowly lose their mobility. But there's not an issue. These tanks will perform more head on brawling tactics, making use of their front armor thickness to their advantage. Apart from tank fighting, medium tanks can really excel in supporting infantry. Bigger gun caliber going bigger boom, decent reloading speed can really give the enemy infantry a run for their money. And then with a bigger health pool and bigger frontal armor, it can really do a breakthrough to enemy camp. Assuming, of course, your friendly infantry is there to push with you. 
Countering them is not as easy as fighting like things. But try to get the weaker sides. Pomodos there and their armor is weaker. But if you're flanking, target the gun bridge first. That will give you a better chance of winning the fight. If you win the head on brawl, adopt the hold on position to increase your survivability. And targets the barrels to hinder their aim. Facing the front of these mediums, target the far left and all the right part of the front armor. There's fuel and ammo on there. Even shooting the lower glazes can actually prove effective. Next up, we have tank destroyers. These armored vehicles have a strange weight range. Considering the half of these armored vehicles are consisting of light tank parts on the other half medium tanks. In DJG, however, Riddle recently gave tank destroyers the light tank of hope. But they all have one thing in common. Excellent firepower. Even if stopped, these tank destroyers can really punish any other armored vehicles if played right. The mobility and speed is depending on the weight or what they originated from, and this affects the reference in taking out enemy tanks. For example, the M10 Wolverine is somewhat a lighter Sherman tank, whereas the M18 Hellcat is a whole new vehicle that is really thinly armored. This means that the M10 has thicker armor a slower mobility, therefore preferring a hit on brawling, whereas the Hellcat is fast and mobile. Never preferring the flank aspect maneuver. But that doesn't mean you have to play these tactics by the way. You can always change it up depending on your preference. I mean, you could play flank aspect as a stronger shirt if you like. But this kind of firepower, just do your best. As tank destroyers in low health, I suggest either sticking close to the cover or adopting the whole on approach, or even better, an ambush tactic. This driver will take cover with the roads in view. Then wheel away and need tanks and drive along it. Talking about taking out tanks as tank destroyer, you may wonder should I create two slot APCR or both APCR and high explosive? My experience take playing tank destroyers so far is just bring both. Whether you like it or not, whether there's enemy tanks or not, even as tank destroyers, you often find yourself in an infantry support situation. So in this situation, you are going to need high explosive to deal with the enemy infantry. Which is pretty much the reason why the US doctrine for a specific armored vehicle to destroy tanks pretty much died after World War II. Any surviving US tank destroyers today is mostly used like a modern day medium tank. So how do we counter them? Well, identify the vehicle first. If it's a slower head-on brawler, either flank them or target the front sides and or lower places. If it's a faster vehicle, target one of the tracks. And as they do not have a lot of HP, they can be killed pretty quickly. So, blowing off one of the tracks to hinder their movement is often a death sentence. Next up, we have heavy tanks. Heavy armor, heavy gun, heavy everything. These tanks sacrifice speed and mobility and size for armor and firepower. Which means that these heavy pieces of work is definitely going for head of body. Touch of pull and take frontal armor. These AV tanks can easily shrug off most shots frontally. But keep in mind that AV tanks are still no gods on the battlefield. You can die to a medium tank or tank destroyers easily still. So it is recommended to do hit on brawling. But given at least half of these AV tanks or armaments, try to keep your distance. AV tanks have the firepower for the range and forcing other tanks to shoot at you with little to no effect. But beware that some high level mediums and tank destroyers may not care much about your frontal armor. <coughs> I face realize <coughs> You can try infantry support with these AV tanks, but when it comes to infantry protecting your tank, AV tanks are pretty much reliant on them. If they are all alone, they are very vulnerable to anti tank infantry due to their size and lack of mobility. So, if you have no faith in your fellow infantry, do not push them aggressively. So how do we counter them effectively? They are heavy tanks. So they may not have that kind of mobility. So flank them. Getting close where your gun is more effective. And mobility is the key. Always try to knock out the gun reach first, as heavy tank has a strong melee armor than most tanks. But after you knock out the gun reach, 
this will hinder the already long reload. Then just see the engines and have your way with this heavy tank. If you're facing even the long ranges of your heavy tank, knock out the barrel first. Then just do your best in taking them out, hitting the other internal components and whatnot. Lastly, heavy tank destroyers. A little bit of an understatement, these are medium tanks armed with heavy tanks, guns, and one job in mind. Destroy tanks. With a little more armor and health compared to regular tank destroyers, these tank destroyers can do a better job at defeating enemy tanks, but it was more sacrifice of mobility and firing. Depending on your vehicle's mobility and versatility, then go for head-on long-range engagements. It gives of additional armor and strong firepower to your advantage. And this is the end of the 6 Jackson or Slugger, which has weaker armor but better mobility and versatility to make use of in your spec. And again, infantry support wise, just do what you can. But if you're lacking in versatility, you may want to keep your distance. So how do we counter them? If it's a Tarlos SPG, you'd be surprised that all you have to do is flank and spank. Then that Nyakma Tango give him a hug. If it's the M36 Jackson, just do your best. Look out his mobility. And then just hope he doesn't score on the other component. Now let's talk about benches. Like all foot soldiers, you can pretty much wear any of them. But as tankers, there's a few specific ones that you can best wear to your benefit. In the tank driver ribbon, you have Mechanic, Tank Thief, and Tanker Badge. Honestly, only one of these three badges is useful, which is the Mechanic Badge. Mechanic Badge allows you to repair your armored vehicle a lot quicker depending on the level of the badge. After a hard fight against an enemy tank, you also have to perform repairs. And coming from experience, time is everything. If you spend way too long repairing your tank, it's more than likely the enemy you just killed has just respawned and he's making a beeline over to where you kill him in a sort of neutral range, with or without his tank. So with the mechanic patch, it allows you to repair either completely or just enough to get your mobility back, a whole lot quicker to relocate. For the tank thief, how often are you actually able to steal the tank? So far playing the tanker, I was only able to do that once. Mainly because even if I build my tank to try and steal the enemies, it's very often broken with low health. Which, speed-wise, I'm not even going to bother stealing because that means I'll have to re finish repairs on it, which wastes time. Plus, stealing the tank will not give you XP for your original tank you were supposed to be grinding. The garbage is probably the most useless one because all it does is help your tank start up faster. I mean, all you have to do is press the W key to drive. If you don't want to break your finger holding on the key, hold on the W key, press enter, open chat, release the W key, close the chat, and there you go. Lose control. To stop, just press the W key again. In the armor damage ribbon, we have the gunner badge. This badge is probably one of the most used badges as a tanker. It gives you the ability to reload faster. And depending on the badge level, if you faster reload, you can dish out a much higher damage per second, allowing you to hit more components in very little time. So much so that you may even outgun some of the higher tier tanks, which often have a bigger gun caliber. And bigger gun caliber means longer reload. Just beware that if your bridge is destroyed, the first reload badge is pretty much useless as your reload is still ridiculous and long. And of all these badges, the most sought for and to me, the most disgusting thing a tanker can have, the Iron Fist Badge. Originally, this badge is meant for editing weaponry to do extra damage to tanks, but one of the armor updates accidentally made this badge effective to tank guns as well. And the real solution to this is simply changing the description of the badge. So this badge gives a massive boost to the tank gun's damage, depending on the badge level. And with this badge, you can pretty much give zero shit about any tank's armor, which pretty much makes this entire guy completely pointless. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you all next time. I'm kidding, guys. But seriously, I'm happy. Rito for once took the easy route in fixing something instead of spending three to four years on it. But this batch alone is one of the few 
I really wish they look into fixing. Or at least make it easier for tankers to grind. Here's why. First off, new players trying to play tankers are either getting plastered by these iron fisters, which makes it difficult for them to actually do anything. Same applies to those tankers who have allied to these iron fisters because they can't get any kills. Let's leave it at that. Secondly, to get this badge, you have to grind the chauffeur ribbon. Which means either your tanker is an old infantry where you can change this class into this soldier class purchasing. You have to abandon your tank and ferry players across the map in a civilian truck on your own infantry spawn car. Which is counted as XP farming and this frowned upon by many as it is common in appropriate practice in both stage and war mode. Doesn't help either if you keep dying each time and respawning a tank just to abandon it again. This is why we can't have nice things. You may opt for other badges that's available. Recon badges like the Gili or the Camouflage badge in the Recon Ribbon also work for the tanker as it does for the Recon wearing it. Fading out the marker quick or removing kill cam prevent enemy tankers from exacting revenge as easily. But why? Why would you do that? Why would you do any of that? Measures aside, let's talk about loading out your tanker. It's important to note that your tanker only has 6 equipment points, which means you can't carry an MG42 inside and out. What you can carry are some machine guns, sidearms, melee weapons, handheld explosives, and any equipment you see fit. Some machine guns are what you may start off with. But me personally, I wouldn't bother getting invested in it. Because you see, some machine gun takes up 6 slots, but the wrench is an important thing to carry. So that means your submachine gun will be forced to carry zero pouches. Plus, the higher deal submachine gun, especially for a German tanker, costs 158 grand when you need the credits to also buy newer tanks. But then again, if you feel safer with the submachine gun, one pouch or no, then roll with it. Sidearms are my go to in this case. They only take up 2 slots with 1 pouch ammo, leaving the rest to equipment points available for other equipments, especially the wrench. You may buy any of the pistol you fancy, just remember that it may cost a bit of credits you were trying to save up. Many weapons are kinda pointless to have honestly. You already have the wrench that doubles as a melee weapon. And plus, you are swinging your melee weapon at a guy with a gun. And the explosives are another good option at clearing out enemy anti-tank infantry. Just spam them and, well, miss the enemy anti-tank infantry into ranting about it on Facebook. You can also offer the anti-tank weaponry as a tanker, but you already have the gun to do that. Equipments are pretty useful depending on what you like. Found in the tank driver ribbon, wrenches are the most important piece for any tanker, or basically any soldier that uses a vehicle. You buy your vehicle instead of losing it, saves up on tank resources that the quartermasters were sending in limited numbers. Monoculars can help to smuggle enemy tanks, but I really suggest being in the call with the tank commander to do that. Sometimes just a check isn't enough. Health packs can be useful, and sometimes you can get sniped by enemy recons, but survive. You can heal up, but honestly, if you have the health crate on your tank, this is pretty much useless. Strange but true to our cases, US tankers have an M1A1 carbine. If you see my carbine videos, you can probably guess that this is a very effective firearm to have. Taking up only 4 points out of 6, you can have 1 or 2 power share ammo and still have room for your wrench. So maybe it's time for the anti tank infantry to think twice before bullying the tank. So, now we address the bigger elephant in the room infantry. In the flankers of infantry, you will encounter in HNG. The anti tank Rambo, the MG camper, the guy who gives zero shit about your presence, the tank humpers, and the extremely rare game player. Anti tank Rambos are the most common of infantry you come across. For the enemy faction and every match, war or stage, these anti tank Rambos only have one thing in mind kill all panzers. Bender, wake up! I was having the most wonderful dream! To counter them, use an explosive to blow them up. Or use your co XMG to mow them down. Sometimes sticking close to where friendly infantry or even AI can prove to be effective. But beware. As mentioned earlier, there's always this comeback who is destined for friendly fire. Next up is the Bow MG Camper. 
but most of the time it's usually some infantry doing this but even tankers does this they will jump in the tank and just spam the MJ spam my civilian drugs spam my mother spam my tanks but funny enough not an enemy infantry or even better whenever enemy anti-tank infantry starts attacking your tank they continue to hide inside like puppies in shell or best case scenario I actually saw this happening they build the tank at the last minute and runs up away I really do not mind the extra help but take note first as a ball gunner the job is to shoot infantry not tanks only time you're doing that is because you're marking the enemy tank if the tanker are aware of said enemy tank then stop firing because all you're doing after that is giving the tank's position away and also in the moment where enemy infantry shows up you may be dangerously low on ammo and left in an awkward situation secondly if you have spawned in a vehicle for the love of god do not abandon it just to ride in the tank you are actually wasting resources and becoming a liability in war matches which brings me to the next point if you are a new tanker do not abandon your light tank hitchhiking or someone else's tank will not give you the xp you need to get a new tank third point this is something I cannot first stress enough. if an anti tank infantry is attacking the tank get your front ass out and shoot him especially if you are an infantry you have a better firearm than the tanker plus since these anti tank rebels will be focusing on destroying the tanks you will catch them with the pants down when you jump out fourth point if you have a wrench get out and help repair normally I personally don't really care if they have a wrench or not but if you do and you help repair I do greatly appreciate it as every one second spent repairing during a firefight is another second the tank is staying in the fight so if there's an infantry that just annoys you while you're tanking just squad lock the MG you'll leave if it's a squad mate under your command just kick him from the squad and then lock it if it's a fellow squad mate then there's really nothing you can suggest there next we have the guy who for some reason don't really care too much that you were a thing so you just stand around shooting completely missing the fact that an armored vehicle the size of a tugboat is looking right at them next we have tank compass these are found mainly in their own team basically these guys are doing one of these three things trying to hitchhike on the tank trying to use a support crate or trying to repair you which I appreciate that by the way so as a result they ended up getting run over by accident when you try to reverse a tank to get out of a bad situation half the time they just let it go but most of the time they report the out of you as if it's your fault they died I mean it's not as if you can actually see behind the person like you walk under half the time it's not like what you can see is a light box surrounding a pitch black screen no 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 totally your fault you ran that guy over you bad team killer Next, we have their extremely rare game player. This guy is a true OG of tankers. He kills infantry, both with ball gun and firearm. Does not report you when you ran over him by accident? Then you repair as you when are busy with an enemy tank. Everybody, love this guy, and he actually benefits. <coughs> I'm awake. Oh, it's a dream. So, now, I also need to address some issues that he's actually not the game, not so much the player. He's no hidden player. It's not even a private issue. There are some bugs or environment issues in the game that you need to look out for. First off, the environment. Rito. Also Rito. So yeah, you guessed it. The bane of any tanks trying to play the flank and spin game. Freaking rocks everywhere. So whenever you find yourself in a sticky situation with a tiny ass rock, either someone comes and push you off, or hit the cruise control in reverse or forward then fire the gun in the opposite direction while you're at it. You should come off the damn rock, if not, you can always press F11. Secondly, this has been the thing since they added new decals for pen bounce rounds on the surface of tanks. Sometimes when you fire, one of these few things might happen. Your shell randomly dips into the ground. Your shell does not register at all. Your shell registers, but the impact is not where you are aiming. So far playing tankers in HNG, I've noticed that this happens whenever my tank is in an awkward leveling. Meaning that if I position my tank, my work on it slightly as one of the tracks is on a curb or something, 
and this usually ends up with my shots going nowhere. So if you are having this issue, try to level up your tank properly before you engage the enemy. Now if anyone remembers from my credit grinding video, tanking can make you decent credits. This is because in this tank tanks, infantry vehicles gaining a lot of points and yet EPCR or HE shells are way more credit efficient than anti-tank explosives. Just keep in mind that if you're getting tank hunter constantly, I highly recommend spawning in the low tier tank instead. They're cheaper and if you do well, there's an easy tank run right off the bat. Just one final thing. Rito puts up a DLC that you can buy on the Steam store page. I'm gonna do a quick review. Just note that this is coming from an F2P guy. So here in the store page, we have three types of DLCs for tanks for all three factions. They all contain the same setup faction wise, so I'll just look at one faction. Unless there's an odd one now. Hope you don't mind. Light tanker back. It's not too bad for about US $14, but honestly these tanks and equipment you can actually get for free pretty easily. They're not too high a ribbon rank in the armor assault ribbon and they're not too expensive to get either. The tanker you get is very likely a starter level, meaning that he only earns a few thousand credits to make up for the tanks you just bought, which can be an issue if you're struggling for credits. At least the vehicles in question is not too expensive to maintain. On another thing, the tanker has no levels. That also means that he does not have any badges to boot, meaning you're stuck with the standard long reload, slow repair, etc. Which brings us to the next thing about this pack. Ribbon boosters are meh. I'm not a sort of boosters maybe, especially since you probably have zero XP in the ribbon, and you're stuck with a couple of tanks you may not find to your liking. Tank driver is a meh. Most of the time players grind there for the range, and since this DLC already provides you with one, there's not much need to grind for it except maybe the mechanic badge. But that's an eventually your gun badge, and you'll probably win a gunner badge over this one. And gun assault booster is also a meh, especially if you prefer the yeah, submachine gun over sidearms. And even for me, preferring the sidearms, I really don't see the point in getting metal pistols ASAP, mainly due to me finding use for the Stunter pistols and me saving credits for a different armored vehicle. Armor damage booster will get one thing, the gunner badge, a lot quicker. But to me, it's another eventually you'll get badges. But if you want to make most of your money, I highly suggest using it after you get APCR on at least one of the tanks you just bought. Which can be a while, considering that the pack does not include individual tank ribbon boosters. Next up, the medium pack. Already right off the bat, I can see an issue with this pack. Who on earth wants to pay US $25 for the Panzer 2C? You'll get an Armor Assault rank 1 or an M3 Lee. The other tanks available in this DLC is not too bad. I'll take the tier 2 medium and tank destroyer. But then again, keep in mind two things. First off, the tanker is a low level, which means you have to go through the grind process without any badges sticking you to the dreaded long reload, especially for vehicles like the Stark or the Panzer 6 Tiger 1. Secondly, as mentioned earlier, since the tanker is a low level, maintaining the repair build of these vehicles is going to be a problem. Given that these are higher tier tanks, they cost quite a bit more to spawn each one. Especially to note that the US bundle has the M24 Chaffee, which is the most expensive light tank to spawn. Ribbon boosters are the same, but this bundle also includes individual tank ribbons, which can be helpful for your tank grind for the APC here. However, only two of the four tanks will be covered. And in the German bundle, one of them is wasted on the Panzer 2C. Finally, the heavy pack. I am afraid this is a pack I strongly advise to avoid. For about US $36, You'll get the anti medium tank, tank destroyer, and the heavy tank. But here's this. The tank crewman, starter submachine guns, starter light tank, these are things included in the DLC that you can get for free after unlocking the vocation for a tanker. Also, the tanker is on low level. 
that means your repair build is going to suck. And your vehicles are the most expensive tanks you can spawn. And your tanker is stuck using stock AP to try and destroy tanks with, which is not a good way to get money. And another thing, if you're new to tanking, you may not be prepared for the annoying problem that is the respawn delay. And their tanks have an obscenely long respawn delay. And quite often, whenever I come across someone who actually did buy this DLC, they rage quit after dying because they don't know how to properly operate the tank, what to do, what not to do, and now they're trapped in the respawn delay, and then we lose the match. So this is why I strongly advise you to avoid this pack. Do not rush to get the tanks you want by buying the DLC, as entire tanks is not equal to immortality. Even the strongest of tanks require skills and experience to operate, and levels to maintain. I only say maybe when you're better at tanking in the game. So there you have it, my guy on tanking. Now you possess the knowledge of tanking. Get out there, show those foot soldiers who wronged you, who's boss now. Stay tuned for the other parts of this guide, that's how we'll bring down each and every tank from each faction. And with that, I wish you the best. Bye.